the hidden garden killers that are quietly destroying your soil, and what to do instead. Ever wonder why your plants seem weaker each season, even though you're doing everything right? Maybe you've added the best fertilizers, bought top-grade potting mix, and followed all the advice online, yet something's still off. I've been there too, and after years of experimenting, failing, and finally learning, I realized the harsh truth. The real enemy might be hiding in plain sight, buried deep in the soil we trust. At Soil and Crop Central, we believe in growing smarter, not just harder. Today, we're diving into the hidden threats quietly wrecking your soil health, and the proven fixes that can bring it back to life. No fluff, no fear-mongering, just facts gardeners everywhere need to hear. When soil stops being soil, let's make one thing clear. Healthy soil isn't just dirt, it's alive. Under a thriving garden lies a bustling community of microbes, fungi, worms, and insects working around the clock to feed your plants, fight off disease, and keep things balanced. But you know, many modern gardening habits are breaking this living system down. When that underground network starts to collapse, plants suffer in silence. They grow slower, become more disease-prone, and need more artificial help. This sets off a vicious cycle of more inputs, more problems, and less long-term success. The good news? You can break the cycle once you understand what's really happening. Synthetic nitrogen is not helping. If your go-to solution for slow growth is synthetic fertilizer, you're not alone. These products promise fast results, and honestly, they deliver. But what they don't advertise is how they silently damage your soil ecosystem over time. Synthetic nitrogen, often found in bright blue or green crystals, floods the soil with readily available nutrients. Plants gulp it up like candy, showing lush growth in just a few days. But beneath the surface, this bypasses the natural process of nitrogen fixation, where beneficial microbes partner with plant roots to provide nitrogen gradually and sustainably. The longer you rely on synthetic nitrogen, the more those microbes start to disappear. Your soil becomes dependent on constant feeding, kind of like a garden addicted to caffeine. Worse, synthetic fertilizers acidify the soil, throwing off the pH and killing off key organisms like earthworms. You end up with flashy plants and failing soil, an illusion of health that's really hiding deeper decline. Instead, build fertility with natural, slow-release sources. Well-aged compost, decomposed manure, and nitrogen-fixing plants like clover and vetch feed both your crops and the life in your soil. This approach isn't slower, it's smarter. After switching to organic inputs in my own garden, I saw stronger plants that needed far less watering and maintenance. Sterile potting mix is a silent threat. Walk into any garden center and you'll find potting soils labeled as sterile or pasteurized. These mixes are sold as safe, clean, and pest-free. But honestly, they're also lifeless, and that's a problem. In this microbe-free vacuum, bad microbes move in quickly. It's a phenomenon known as the sterile soil syndrome, and it often leads to nutrient deficiencies, poor growth, and an increased need for chemical fertilizers. There's a better way. Either buy potting mixes that include compost, worm castings, or mycorrhizal fungi. Or, you know, just make your own blend. I've started mixing about 30% finished compost into commercial potting soil, and the results have been dramatic. Seedlings are sturdier, growth is more consistent, and I rarely need to feed them anything extra. Contaminated compost can wreak havoc. Not all compost is created equal. In fact, some compost can kill your plants. And honestly, it's happening more often than gardeners realize. Persistent herbicides are the culprit. These chemicals, used in conventional hay, grass clippings, and even animal feed, can survive composting and end up in the soil as residue. When applied, they cause warped, twisted growth, especially in tomatoes, beans, and sunflowers, and they can linger in your soil for years. Even organic-looking compost piles can be contaminated if the materials used weren't truly clean. I learned this the hard way after buying a batch of manure-based compost that stunted nearly half my garden. It took a full season to rebuild those beds. To avoid this, know exactly where your compost materials come from. Talk to your suppliers, ask about herbicide use, 
and consider composting at home using only inputs you trust. It takes a little more work, but it's the best insurance you can give your soil. Fungicides don't discriminate. When powdery mildew or rust shows up, it's tempting to fight back fast. And while fungicides can help, they often cause more damage than they fix. Broad-spectrum fungicides don't just kill bad fungi. They wipe out the good guys, too. One of the most important groups of these good guys is mycorrhizal fungi. These microscopic strands form symbiotic relationships with plant roots, increasing water and nutrient uptake and boosting resilience. When these fungi are gone, plants struggle to absorb phosphorus, water, and micronutrients. They become dependent on added fertilizers and frequent watering, creating yet another feedback loop of dependence. Instead of going nuclear with chemical fungicides, focus on prevention and minimal impact solutions. Ensure good airflow by spacing plants well, water at the base in the morning, and grow disease-resistant varieties. If intervention is absolutely necessary, use targeted methods like neem oil or baking soda sprays and apply them sparingly. After cutting fungicides out of my routine, I noticed fewer long-term issues. Yes, I still get the occasional spot of mildew, but the plants bounce back faster and the garden as a whole is much more resilient. Real soil health takes real time. Here's the truth that doesn't get shared enough. Rebuilding soil takes time, but the payoff is massive. Healthy soil doesn't just support your plants, it powers your entire garden ecosystem. By shifting away from quick fixes and focusing on soil biology, I've seen firsthand how gardens transform, plants become more self-sufficient, pests and diseases become manageable, yields go up, and so does satisfaction. So if you're stuck in a cycle of feeding, spraying, and troubleshooting, it might be time to look underground. Don't just grow plants, grow soil. Because the more life you support beneath the surface, the more life your garden will give back to you. Join the movement at Soil and Crop Central. If this opened your eyes, don't stop here. Our mission is to help gardeners rebuild their soil from the ground up with science-backed insights and hard-earned lessons. Subscribe, dig deeper, and grow better with every season.